Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Well, it all started when me and my friend wanted to set out on an adventure together. You know, to explore the vast world, fight monsters, and find treasures. To survive the wild nature by fulfilling our basic needs, just like real men. Which led us to a very strange game developed by a shady studio that, to this day, I cannot find much about. And that game is called Skyrim. Huh? Obviously, I'm joking. But do I need to say it? It's in the thumbnail, in the title, in the description, and in the comments. It's outward. And after looking at the Steam reviews and listening to a song from one of my favorite artists, we decided to give it a try. At a first glance, it looks like a Souls-like RPG with some survival elements, but that is a very poor description of this weird experience. First, you are not a hero of the story like in other games, nor do you possess any kind of power or special abilities. Quite the opposite, you are a commoner, and at times, rather, a victim of the unforgiving world that is outward. The story goes like this. You are extremely ugly, shipwrecked, and about to lose your house. The first mission is to gather 150 silver within 5 days. As the sole survivor of your family, you have inherited a great debt for the war crimes committed by your ancestors. And now, the only way to get this kind of money is to go outward. <coughs> Although you can pretty much do whatever you want from here, your first adventure may go something like this. Walk around, pick up berries, solve a local conflict by eliminating both parties. Then, with a boost of confidence, try to take on some bandits, which will most likely result in your demise. Which raises the question, what happens when you die in this game? Well, depending on the circumstances of your death, you will have a random defeat scenario. In this particular situation, waking up naked in a bandit camp. Why naked? I will leave that to your imagination. This first encounter teaches you some very important things. Dying is bad, so you should avoid that. And also, your max health and stamina will decrease, and you need to sleep to recover. But since the action takes place somewhere in a Balkan country, you will have to take turns during the night in order not to get ambushed. Now you are prepared, so it's time to get back at those bandits. So take out your weapon, drop your backpack so it don't slow you down, and observe the high damage that you are not dealing. But don't worry, they do. In the beginning, enemies are very tough, forcing you to take on a more strategic approach, like running away, which works every time, unless you forget your backpack. Snake, you are in danger. Get out of there. Next time, I will pay more attention. Are you fine? You know what, forget paying 150 silver, go to this guy on the beach, give him a bandage, and you just earn yourself a tribal favor, so which much. means that you can keep the house for free. You're welcome. Now, how to find a beach or get back to your house is another story, since there is no live location on the map, and there is no fast travel, and wandering around may get you in some unwanted trouble. What's that sound? Oh! Pablo. And by the way, there is no experience gained from killing enemies, so everybody can pretty much fuck you anytime during the game. Isn't this wonderful? So how do you progress then? That depends on how much are you willing to risk your life, or how fat is your wallet. While skills can only be purchased from traders in town, weapons can also be found by clearing and looting dungeons. And every type of weapon has special attacks and synergies. Take for example my expensive claymore, for which I have a less expensive skill that will block incoming attacks and confuse enemies. That I have used to restore my honor by defeating the bandit chief, getting myself an even more powerful sword, which actually, it's a halberd, meaning that I can no longer use my skill. Very nice. But not everybody is a man of action as myself, so you might be interested in man, or in learning magic, which is an adventure on its own. You will have to go on a very long pilgrimage to the Conflux Mountain, Make your way through many powerful enemies, and probably die a few times. Then permanently sacrifice part of your maximum health and stamina for a little bit of mana, and that only to learn this. Mm. 
Though it may look like a scam, you will see that after my whimsical friend unlocks the forbidden arts of reading and writing, magic can be very overpowered in this game. And I can also use it to buff the shit out of me. But even with these fighting options, the combat will always come down to chasing every enemy you meet without shame. But you can only do as much in order to survive. And talking about survival... The hardships of Outward are not limited to bandits, giant crustaceans, and having to run from point A to point B most of the game. There are also some survival elements, and it's a little different from other games. For example, if you don't eat or drink, you die, like instantly, that's pretty much it. And with today's prices, you will have to search for food and clean water, but make sure it's clean water. While you explore, hunt and fight, you will see your max health and stamina decreasing. A way to recover from this is by sleeping, but remember not to sleep too much because food will spoil over time. Another alternative is to craft teas by boiling bugs, which is more convenient. The red one will give you health, while the green one will restore stamina. Or you can combine them both to get a very painful erection that will last for 9 hours. Also, there are climates and seasons, so make sure you are properly dressed for every occasion. Or at least have items to remove debuffs. But there's quite a few debuffs in this game. Now you may think, is there more to Outward than fighting, walking and contracting various diseases? Of course. Admire nature. Admire the interesting architectural choices. Ride the lightning. Survive the winter. Survive the desert. Take a selfie. Levitate. Dance. Join a faction. Spend hours managing weight. Explore the sewers. Do not drink the water. Cook. Cook. Take out the dog. Learn about ragdoll physics. Practice flying. Spend a life of slavery. The possibilities are endless. Look, I'm not trying to sell this to you, but it's not like there's that many interesting games to play nowadays. I try to keep the spoilers to a minimum, but I hope you have an idea of what to expect. This is not the greatest game you can play, and it takes some time and patience. It's like the little bit of toilet paper left on the roll. It does the job with some creativity. So, go forge your own adventures. In co-op, do not ever let me catch you playing this solo, and do not buy the DLCs, trust me.